Hey, Wizard Apprentices, welcome to the Lightning Experience. So for those of you who don't know, the Lightning Experience is something that was announced on August 25th of 2015. It's the new user interface for Salesforce. Now, we're like taking a look at a pre-release org, so things may be a little bit different when this comes out in Winter 16. The Lightning Experience new user interface is going to be available for Sales Cloud only to begin with and let's take a look of how we can get the setup so when you first get to the setup screen we're going to see lightning experience listed here in the nice bright new and if we click this it's going to give us a guided introduction of how to get this going and setting up so when you go to the site we have some information about the lightning experience and it's going to ask us to turn some features on first like shared activities where you can have multiple contacts to a single event or task account insights or basically think of a news feed for that particular account and some others what's really going to be important what's really going to be important though is to do two things one is to set up permissions and the other one is to actually enable the salesforce experience so what we're going to do is we're going to start with permissions first so when you click on set up permissions it's going to take you to a permission set and i have one started here i'm going to just call this lightning experience and we're searching for the lightning experience user this is a permission that is also on the profile, so you can enable this for entire profiles, but I'm gonna do permission sets because I like to have very granular ideas. My recommendation is, since this is brand new and it will not necessarily work for every single person's configurations, that you're gonna to wanna to create a pilot system and only let certain people try from varying roles first before you decide to turn it on for the entire org. Once you've created your permission set, you're gonna to want to assign this. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign it to the wonderful person that is just me and my org. But we're not done yet. Um, we don't have lightning experiencing sh showing up as an option. We need to actually enable it. So let's go back to lightning experience and we'll enable the new Salesforce experience. And now we have switched to lightning experience. So let's go to the homepage. So this is the homepage we've known and loved for about the last decade. And now if I switch to Lightning Experience, we'll get this wonderful thing that says, hey, you're about to switch to the default Salesforce experience. Beware. No, oh, all right, switch. The first thing we're going to see when this turns on is our user interface is going to look very different. Let's refresh. Well, let's try that again. Why didn't that work? Here we go. So we're loading up. This looks like Salesforce One. As a matter of fact, right now, it's even using the URL one slash one dot app, which is the Salesforce One app, which is pretty interesting. But here's our new homepage. We have some quarterly performance. We have account insights, top deals. I don't have a whole lot here. We have our tabs off the cross. We have menus. If you don't know what your icons are, like, who can remember the crown is opportunities. You can click the menu to see the words. So let's take a look at what an opportunity looks like. I have a whole bunch of test items in here recently viewed. Uh, let's view all our opportunities and uh, pick just one of these. So the default when we come here is we're taken to the activity screen. So this is where we can do our tasks. We can see next tap. I'm sorry, let's try that again. We can see next steps. We also have our, some of our, our related lists off to the right here. We can add our products by using the drop down here, which is kind of nice. It gives us a completely different view. One thing I haven't, I don't really like about this method is what's our product? Where's my wonderful product list? I'm going to assume it has type in. And I'm going to search for generation because I know I have generation. Okay. Select. So let me select more than one at a time. No, that's sad. Sales price, put in our quantity. And we'll save. So there's that. that that's definitely different for people. Um, collaborate takes us to our chatter. And details gives us a detail page. So it works very similar. Oh, and there's an error. Okay. So it works very similar to how Salesforce One works. One thing I do like is the kind of sales path that's up 
at the top. So if I'm going to move forward, I can update and mark as the current sa stage, um, assuming this worked and didn't get an error. This is the wonders of new releases. We also have some buttons at the top, but you'll notice there's not a whole lot of options up here. Many of your custom buttons are going to disappear because they will not work, and that includes the URL hacks. To change the stage, you can click the stage value at the top and then select Marcus Current Stage, and that will update the stage. You have some other information that's at the top uh, that you are able to edit, but if you want to edit the whole screen, you can use the buttons up the upper right corner, and this opens up again what looks to be like an action, a publisher action versus a standard type of edit page that we're used to. But at least it's editable. Let's try changing the stage from here and updating it. So there we go. So it is faster. You'll notice that we're not refreshing the whole page. We get the nice little loaded screen that shows up here. Um, but none of our custom buttons are here. You're adding your products one at a time. Uh, and that's a little bit of a disappointment. So hopefully there's going to be some solutions out there to help you kind of repeat what you did here. Because I know from some companies I've worked at, the product list is actually very complicated and very detailed. And people may not necessarily are going to be searching by the name of the product to try to find it. Communities. What's this button? That's our app launcher. So here's the new app launcher. Uh, basically, instead of a drop down, we have this nice little visual example. We have some settings. So that's how we can get to our setup and home. Click our picture to get to our profile. Uh, files, accounts. Let's take a look at an account. Here's Accounts Insights. I'm not quite sure why it's telling me BlackBerry requires good technology because that's not a really good insight for the Wizard News, but okay. Um, I'm going to think that the Account Insights is going to be really dependent upon what your accounts are, what industries you're selling to, and so forth. So it's a little bit of a different. Instead of a list, I see this table of opportunities. I'm going to imagine most of these related items are going to be pretty much the same. We have our details page. So looks similar, different. I don't see the same sections that are used to exist here. I do like that I can quickly grab a new task, a new event off to the right. That's interesting. Let's take a look at dashboards. And let's do old dashboards. Oh, I don't even have a single dashboard. Let's create a new dashboard. Whoa. That's not what I wanted to do. New dashboard. Let's create this. Well, this looks different, doesn't it? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten little boxes here. Let's grab a report. And I don't remember what any of my reports are. Let's see if it was. Oh, it does not like opening up the new tabs. Okay, so we're going to have to go tab all reports. All right, let's create a new report. Let's do an opportunity report. And, all right, name, amount, stage, not age, stage all time let's add okay I wonder where my chart is that's interesting can't create a chart in this Okay, so this is ops by stage totaling amount. Okay. I'm going to guess that this may not necessarily work, but let's find out. Here we 
go. That looks pretty. Now, you'll notice this takes multiple components, but we can drag this around so we can skip a column. That's pretty. Yeah. All right. I'm going to save that. We'll come back. We'll do some deeper dives uh, a little bit later. But this is really kind of first insight. So we have a calendar. Um, if we take a look at other items, leads, tasks are going to work very similarly. I don't have any tasks. Success. Let's just add a task for fun. I'm, I'm kind of surprised it doesn't default to me. And Okay. Fun problems with the pre-release. So let's add a subject line. Hello, wizard apprentices. Let's select a contact. Uh, I think I'm in here as a contact. Let's see if I find out. No, no contacts. I should probably create some data, more data in here. Um, dashboards we looked at, feeds we looked at. I really don't know. For people who saw the wonderful pre-release, there was this really cool drag and drop um, component that you can go to to uh, update your stages and have them automated. And I don't even see how to get that. I don't know if that's a, not available in the pre-release version or what. So that's a nice little look at least intro look at the pre-release version. I'm sure there's going to be some fixes and some improvements between the pre-release version of the Lightning Experience and what we're going to see at Dreamforce and probably what's going to be out on Winter 16 itself. Uh, important key takeaways is you do have to enable the experience for your org as well as assign a permission for people to be able to toggle it into it. And if for some reason you have an individual person who hits a roadblock and simply cannot do their job because the lightning experience changed something for example maybe they need access to a custom button or maybe they want to get access to be able to add more than one product at a time there is the capability to switch back to salesforce classic and get to your nice familiar page layout and it's pretty quick so i hope this helps give people an idea of what's coming with the lightning experience as i get more information on what we can do and cannot do with it i'm going to post more videos more blog posts if there's something in particular you would like me to try to test or, or play around with uh add a comment to this video or post a comment off to the blog thank you very much for watching remember the magic is out there it's yours for the taking be sure to check out some of the other videos, including the Visual Workflow Wizard Apprentice series, our Wizard Apprentice series for Process Builder, the time when Mark Ross and I dressed up as Flonatics for Dreamforce, and, of course, the blooper reel from the admin parody we did for Dreamforce 2014.